more chairs out in the hallway? Is there more of those out there? Yeah. Anybody wants to grab a chair? Uh, we'll just get rolling. Um, if you want to scavenge a chair and bring it back afterwards, there's some off to this side and some off to that side. But uh, let's get going. My name is Zach Went. Um, I've been programming graphics, if you saw my bio, uh, since the Apple II Plus with a cassette drive to load and save. Um, and that had six colors, but you can only use, that's good if you count black and white as colors, uh, you can only use four at a time in a neat little area. So things have gotten significantly better since then. Um, and uh, what I've got up here is I currently organize the Minnesota VR and HDI group. If you haven't heard about it, uh, I put it on the sign-up page. Also put a stack of cards back there by Ava. Just grab one, I've got more if they run out. Um, the URL shortener is not working for some reason, and I didn't have time to troubleshoot that. But uh, we've got a meeting coming up in a week and a half. And it's not just VR, but it's mainly VR, because that's awfully exciting to people right now. We also do anything related to human-computer interface, and actually, this is very hard to see. Um, Jerry does these game slash art installation thing, and uh, and this is what we're going to be talking about in a week and a half. It's this crazy suitcase that looks like it's from the Cold War, you know, some failed East European country, um, and the main interface is a rotary phone dial. It's pretty awesome. I'm sorry. It's uh, the actual event is going to be on. You can't even read it up here. A lot lower than the person Let me, I'm going to downsize that screen, that'll help. So while I'm trying to multitask here, show of hands, uh, how many people have tried Google Cardboard? Start to lower the You're half the people, okay. Uh, Gear VR, Samsung? A couple of yeah, you guys got one in the office, you said? Um, do you guys own it or you just tested it? Uh, I borrowed it from a friend, we have Oculus. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yep, how about Oculus DK1, DK2? All right, just a couple. Why aren't you guys at the meetings? You didn't know about that? I'm the other IGA meetings. You're missing out. Uh, we meet about smart things. Uh, Bulldog Northeast, Certix, that neighborhood. Um, and uh, it's it's not only the fourth Wednesday of every month, although we might tweak that just by a week. But we're definitely doing it on 422. Um, and has anybody tried any other uh, VR headsets? Okay. Oh, yeah, which one? The Hasbro. Oh, the <laughs> Mind 3D? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Uh, five bucks, I think. Yeah, yeah, you can still get them on Amazon for five, six bucks. So if anybody's not familiar, it has the, len the lenses, but it doesn't have any type of tracking, although you can use your phone tracking, <laughs> similar to Google Cardboard. They are designed for previous Gen iPhones. I yeah, I don't think they went past, like, yeah, they're a little bit smaller. So they're in the picture. Um, let me see if I can down the screen a bit. Let's try 1024. It's about like, oh, 800 by 6. So I wanted to do this like a discussion, so I would appreciate all the questions, all the interruptions I can get. Uh, don't don't uh, don't think anything's you know silly or, or uh, lack of knowledge. Not every good. Only half the people in here even try the headset, so we'll just start with with a kind of a beginner assumption. Um, so I'll start off by uh, defining VR. Um, it's getting very squishy, very fast. But what it's traditionally meant is you have a head-mounted display. And there's tracking, so when you move your head, um, the view follows you. And that seems to be the only definition left. If you look at a Google Cardboard, um, it has that, and that is about it. Um, the key things that are important are that the display fills fills your field of view as much as possible, that it's high resolution, and the tracking uh, is low latency and consistent. Now, with Google Cardboard. Is an, this amazing hack um, of using an existing phone and no no uh, aspect of which was developed for VR, um, but uh, just brilliant hack to, to get that going. Um, because it uh, was 
designed for bone spurs. The tracking is based on accelerometers that are pulled very infrequently with very high latency. Um, and so if you were to actually strap one of those to your head and spend some time in there, you'd get sick. Almost everybody. But they also came up with a clever hack of uh, you hold it like this, you don't strap it on. Also, you can't turn your head very much, so you move slowly <laughs> at the waist. Um, and uh, the other clever hack was uh, for input, um, they put a magnet on the side that messes with the compass. Um, and then they could sense that and uh, interpret that as a click. They also shot themselves in the foot because uh, without the compass, there's no way to correct for accelerometer drift. So um, if you use it for a while, you'll notice eventually forward is not forward anymore. Forward ends up over here in the corner. Um, and there's not much you can do about that. But uh, you, can, you can order one off of Amazon or all these different places, you know, for the realm of 10 bucks, uh, usually cheaper, you know, all the way down to three bucks. You don't always know what you're gonna get unless you pay a little more, but uh, you'll get the basic idea. And I encourage people to do that, just have one around to mess with. Um, the kind of variations that you'll see is uh, the lenses that you get. So it's cardboard wrapped around your phone, your phone, a magnet, and two lenses. So the bill of goods is two lenses and a magnet <laughs> and shipping. Um, so where the Chinese manufacturer skimp is on the lenses. Magnets are pennies. Um, and so with the lenses, you'll either get kind of a more narrow field of view, but a better focus, or a wider field of view, which is more what you want, and maybe only good focus in the center and kind of blurries on the edge. Um, these are very popular in China, but not for VR. They just use them for a portable big TV, essentially. So those don't have the wide field of view, those have the sharp lenses. And that's a little bit more what you get on the cheaper end. Um, in terms of input, that magnet does not work in all phones. Um, it's got a, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just curious, like, why are you kind of passionate about VR? And what oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I should probably do more background. Yeah. Um, let me just wrap up real quick on things yeah, that um, The magnet needs to be near your compass, so it doesn't work in all phones, but uh, a touch to the screen is interpreted as a click, which is hard to do inside a headset. You can run just a little piece of copper tape out to the side or anything capacitive. People have made little levers that poke the screen uh, with anything capacitive on the end of them. Yeah, I should tell you why I'm passionate about it. So I got started back dawn of time, Apple II Plus. Uh, I've always liked graphics, I always liked real-time graphics. They seemed magical to me. Um, pursued games for a long time, but as we just got done talking about down the hall, there's not a lot of opportunities in Minnesota today for games. Um, especially if you gotta feed some kids. Uh, it's it's uh, highs and lows as you work with projects and that kind of thing. Um, but with VR, uh, I've tried it out at SIGGRAPH. I've, I've worked different graphics jobs over the years. I've got to go to SIGGRAPH and speak and exhibit a bunch of times. Every time, there's always been uh, either latency problems. So when this head is getting tracked, if uh, it's slow, so this is my world, this is my head. If I turn and the world's behind and then catches up, this is a really good drunk simulator. <laughs> you will get sick. That's why the low latency needs to be there. The other option has always traditionally been jitter. So um, you're holding still and the world's kind of going like this. And that's, I don't know, that's some kind of meth tweaking simulator. <laughs> it doesn't make you sick, but it makes you like, it's kind of a headache inducing thing. Those have been the two choices. Um, because of the, what they call the uh, dividends of the smartphone wars, all of a sudden, this is now small, cheap, and affordable. Uh, it is literally 100 times cheaper than where it was before the Oculus. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the, the IEEE VR conference here uh, last year when I was hosted at the U of M, and I got to try $30,000 headsets, $100,000 headsets, and they do have much sharper pictures, but most of them had worse tracking than the Oculus uh, that you can buy for $300. That was an eye-opener. The other interesting thing was, it took me almost two days to notice this, um, nobody was talking about content. It's been such a mechanical, engineering-focused thing um, that I just started asking people, like, you know, do you have any full-time VR developers? And the answer across the board is pretty much no, or you know, students. A lot of these are attached to colleges. Um, 
So it's very interesting. So there has been no content. It's coming now that it's in the mass market. Um, yeah, go ahead. I have a cardboard here. Awesome. Oh, nice. What kind of phone? Uh, uh, this is for a six plus. Okay. So it's unofficial. It's not. A, I don't do any. You know, I don't have any. Sure. Yeah, the, that, that is one of the issues with the cardboard too. Um, the lenses, you know, are fixed, and phones are different sizes, so you never quite get them to line up. And that is another cause of eye strain in there. But it is it is cardboard. It is cheap. You should get one and play with it. And there's no barrel to start that. There is if you use the cardboard API. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go a uh, quick show of hands. How many people are, are developers? How many have ever dabbled in VR projects? Cool. Uh, Unity or something else? Just Unity and uh, Unreal Engine. Oh, okay. Uh, UE4? Yep. Yeah. You guys show up for those meetings. <coughs> So mass market, no. Uh, the hype is intense right now. Uh, it's only going to get worse this fall. The Samsung Gear VR is going into full release mode with the commercials and they're going to get demos and three of the best buys in town. Um, encourage you to go do that. The Gear VR is uh, comfortable mobile VR. Uh, the only downside it has is because it's still based on phones, it has very small thermal and power envelopes to work in. So if you push your game, you will overheat a phone, and it will pop up a message after 10 minutes. So you have to really scale down your games. Um, if you're playing movies in there, it's no problem. You go, you go for hours, and then your battery dies. But, uh, but in terms of comfort, the lenses are in the right spot. Uh, there's a low persistence display, which is super critical. The tracking, it's high speed and low latency. It was developed by Oculus, um, and uh, the screen is beautiful. Um, if you have the Note 4 or the upcoming Note 5, that is about the best screen you can use for VR. Bar none, even higher and stuff. Um, so that's that's something to watch for too. If you have a Note 4, you can probably splurge. If you have a Note 4, you got a cell phone plan, you can probably justify some so way to splurge $200 to get the gear VR enclosure. Is there a lot of content being made for that? No, it, it's, it's just getting started. Um, one of the there's kind of two flavors. I have broken into two categories here. Let me share them. There we go. Slide coming over. Actually, let me just do this. Is that going to work? Yes. Um, there's two sizes. Uh, there is what I call snack size VR, mobile VR. Um, but there's still, uh, there's still good examples, and then there's still Horrible, horrible examples. Um, the Gear VR is is kind of bridging the gap. It's comfortable. You can wear it for hours. You can carry it around. Um, it is a high quality display. Uh, the only thing missing from it is it has good rotational tracking. It doesn't have any positional tracking. Um, and if you're very sensitive, like I am, uh, that is noticeable. But as long as you're not moving your head or back, left, and right, or your body. It's not noticeable, so you can use it reclining in a chair. You can even swivel your chair. It's very comfortable. You can use it laying down. Um, you can use it on the airplane if you're not ashamed. <laughs> um, and uh, it is it is good. Um, and like I said, that's going into full court press mode here this fall. With the Note 5, the Galaxy 6, and so on. That means it's going to become the most popular VR avatar. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Get the cowl. And, and actually, that whole goggles thing is probably the main uh, barrier to consumer adoption. Um, it's not as scary as seeing somebody with a Google Glass looking at you, but it is awful silly looking. Um, so yeah, here's a picture of that. Well, nobody's gone so far as to actually integrate an external camera yet, have they? Yeah, this has a pass-through mode. That's um, a scary thought. Uh, there's, there's awesome videos out there, uh, guys wearing it into restaurants, going bowling, trying to eat sushi. Um, <laughs> there is uh, great difficulty because um, if you think your eyes are back here in the sockets, these lenses, these camera lenses are out here. So even if you get the spacing right, 
they're out here, so it's kind of, they call it the eye stock effect. You turn your head and they move more. And you can't handle that very long. Right, the camera's on the, it's not in the center, you know, it's like either, or, or and for the, on the side. For the gear, there's one camera and it's off to the side, so it's funny with the sushi stuff, it's like, uh, <laughs> 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 the bowling's even worse. And, uh, and they tried to order, they went into Buffalo Island with Wild Wings trying to order alcohol, and uh, it wouldn't get served because they need to be able to see your eyes judge how drunk you are. <laughs> <laughs> they did do their whole meal in your VR. It's something. Um, it also has a touchpad in the side, so input is not solved, not by a long shot. All we have is the headset um, and good examples of it. Um, but this is a great one, especially for a portable. There's a nice little touchpad you can swipe and tap and do all your things. And that is a terrific solution. There's also a game pad if you want to carry that around. Um, yeah, it's just been on the list here. Um, like I said, uh, Paraboard is entry level. I encourage everybody to grab one off of Amazon or anywhere else. Uh, but just don't. It will wow you, it will wow everybody you show it to, but don't think that's the limit for where we're going. Um, it is a terrific match for video content. Uh, there's two kind of spherical video around you, which is what most people think, and it's stereoscopic video that actually uses the two different eyes to present depth. Um, you can't do both despite everybody's claims. Uh, if you just think about it, you've got two cameras recording the world and they basically see each other. So you can't do spherical in depth. There's lots of clever hacks. They all don't work. Uh, there's literally hundreds of millions of dollars being invested into John, next VR, and all these places. So they'll get there and they'll be streaming. They already are streaming, you know, live hockey games, basketball games. So the concerts and everything else will be what they pursue first. Uh, and then there's some neat features where you can switch viewpoints. You know, you can switch to that end of the field, switch to that end. Um, and they did a great one for the NHL game. I didn't get to watch it, and I wouldn't care if I had to take yeah. it. But uh, clever things where you can look around, and then when it gets close to the goal line, you just look down, and you get a straight down shot of, of for the goalie. And you can see the last couple seconds and judge for yourself if it's a goal or if it bounced off something. Um, so really clever uses that you can't even get in the stadium. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You're sitting on the front, you know, you maybe get a camera by the bench, something cool like that. Plus, um, you can you can fly around and still get the different parts of it. Um, do's and don'ts. So this is kind of the basic. Oh, that slide didn't get finished. That's weird. Um, I mentioned the old persistence. Tracking, well, persistence display, low latency tracking, and constant frame rate. So the number one thing you can do if you do it in an immersive VR game is uh, keep everything working fast and quick. And 90 hertz is quite the hurdle for 3D. Uh, doing a new development, you know, you probably start with a GeForce 970 or a previous gen, like in uh, the uh, what is it, the 780? It was the height of the previous gen. Um, uh, developing on a laptop, you can develop. You probably can't play or demo on a laptop today. Um, there are, you know, $2,000 laptops with a mobile 980 that could pull it off, I think. But you're gonna start to run into trouble syncing at 75 or 90 hertz. Um, there's all kinds of weird compatibility stuff there, so you kind of just assume it's it's a desktop experience for now for the immersive VR. And the players in that space are Oculus, obviously. Um, the newcomer, HTC Vive, uh, which uh, features basically completely technology from Bell um, and the Sony Morpheus for the PS4 that will be out in mid 2016. Oculus has not announced a release date, but uh, the current rumors are they're really tooling up for manufacturing what they've been demoing for the past six months, the Crescent Bay prototype. HTC Vive is started out November this year. Now the interviews are saying, well, it's 2015 for sure, so that means December or something. Um, that is the current uh, front runner for kind of the, the big experience because it has uh, tracking and input. I could show back over here once. Is there concern that Sony is having the cart lead the horse with how they're doing things? I mean, they really should have put up the goggles and then targeted a platform to support it. Can the PS4 really handle? 
VR? It can, yeah. So their demos uh, were very popular. It's it's different when you're working on a console because uh, you can get closer to the metal and um, and you've got a single platform to optimize for. So uh, what they've shown is that um, you can target either 60 hertz or 120 hertz. They've got external hardware that can upsample the 60 hertz to 120 and it introduce head rotation distortion. So similar to the um, Oculus uh, time warp feature that that they've got. Um, and the demos at GDC were very, very successful. People loved it. Um, and so it, it will be there. There won't be a lot of money in it. So if you won't get AAA games, you might get Sony to convince Activision to spend a month on a little menu item at the bottom of Call of Duty. <laughs> That's the VR shooting range or something. And you'll definitely get indie games in the store. No question about that. I mean, it's going to be VR Boy Gen 2? No, no, it's good. It's good. It's on par with Oculus. Yeah. The the tracking of the hands is um, is just a little bit slow. But everybody that tried it uh, didn't even talk about that. They talked about how fun it was to duck behind the desk and shoot over the top. Or pick things up with your hand and load your gun with your hands. Uh, that's what they talked about. And then in the real technical interviews, you know, where they remembered to look at latency while they were playing it. And they said, oh, it's just a little bit slower than and things, the, the STEM Kickstarter or the uh, HTC Vive. Have you done the Vive? No, nobody's done the Vive. Uh, at GDC, there was something like, uh, I want to say 600 slots for the entire thing, so that was very VIP kind of situation. Um, let's see this. Let's pull up some pictures of that. Actually, while we're waiting, while we're waiting on me, I will start. Um, one thing to keep in mind about VR, it is not a screen. It's not a new kind of screen. Um, you can use it like that for watching movies. You know, if you if you get a Gear VR, one of the coolest apps in there is get a 3D virtual movie theater and watch movies in it and kind of pick your seat in the theater up close or far away or whatever. Um, but it is not a screen. It's around you. It drives, the way to think about it, it drives your, your inputs like they naturally are driven, and that's why it has the potential to make you sick, because if you do that poorly, uh, your brain essentially thinks you've been poisoned when you get any kind of mismatch of that kind of stuff. You guys want to just scroll down a little bit so we can get people in? I've heard it referred to as presence. Like, yeah, presence is just that feeling. Presence is when, it, 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 people describe it all the different ways, presence is when your subconscious parts of your brain believe you're in a space. So a great example is I'm on a tall building. I know I'm standing on the floor. I know I'm safe. But I really don't want to take this step here. I just don't want to. And you have to really uh, muster some gumption to do that. You have to, have to override your instincts. It's very interesting. Or I'm looking at a virtual person, um, and they're staring at me. This is awkward. You, that happens all the time every video game you play every day. In VR, it's like, what? What? <laughs> What's going on? And there's a sense of personal boundaries. It's very interesting. Um, people that have done this in academia, they can do it with brain scans and, and cool stuff. It's lighting up parts of the brain that do not light up when you watch even Omnimax. Uh, getting all the spatial cues right lights up all these parts of your brain that run an autopilot um, or working the 3D world. Uh, it's, it's very, very interesting. And this is just a quick uh, five minute series of illusions. This is Mike Labrash, uh, chief scientist at Oculus, and uh, he did this at the Facebook uh, session. Uh, it's just got a couple of my very favorites. Um, and the point of this is we don't see reality. We never have. People assume that, but that's not what's going on. And it, it's to it give you kind of a sense of um, that, yeah, this is really doable. You can um, drive things the way people expect. And, them as long as you don't mess up. Oh, I don't have some other that. Sounds important for this. Any questions while I'm putzing around? What 3D video formats? Just a simple problem. Has anybody created a good 3D video format to play on your Oculus or any 
generally they'll, they'll just be MP4s and they'll be encoded with some kind of distortion, either over, under, or full highs or left, right. If it's a spherical video, it'll all be distorted to one pane in the video. If it's stereoscopic, it'll be over, under, or side by side. And those fit with the Blu-ray standards for 3D. Um, the bigger problem is just agreeing on what, how to set up the cameras and making a player that does the right thing with the output of different camera setups. That's where the struggle is today. Um, but it'll go wherever the money goes. And currently that's a jaunt and next VR. I don't like jaunt content very much. It might improve some bit. Um, do you guys hear sound when I do this? exactly the same size. Fixate on the yellow dot and observe which way the black and white dots are rotating around. Next, look at the blue dot. And while continuing to look at the blue dot, see out of the corner of your eye which way the black and white dots are going around the yellow dot now. Move your eyes back and forth and you'll see the rotational directions change, even though they're not actually changing. If that doesn't work for you, look at either dot. Then move your eyes up until you see the direction change. Of course, the straws are really going through the window. What's happening here is that you're making a very reasonable assumption about the world. That happens to be wrong. There are a number of cues on the window that apply a perspective that doesn't exist. So your visual system infers that the window is spinning oh, backward for half of a full rotation. As a result, the straw seems to rotate okay. right through the window. This doesn't match any reasonable model of reality, so you end up seeing something impossible. Has anybody built one of these? It's been on the internet since about 2000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well. that's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what's actually happening. Real objects. It's just a piece of paper you can print on the internet. TV convex. So your visual system assumes convexity in the absence of cues to the contrary. That's another one. Everybody the only way to make that assumption work in this case is for the head to be moving in very odd ways. So that's exactly what you see. As the article might say, here's what's really going to make your noodle later on. <laughs> now that you know what's happening, try to see the dragon as it really is. You can. I bet you can't do it. A little bit of conscious knowledge isn't going to do millions of years of evolution in a lifetime of living in this. Five, five, This is my favorite. Five, I've never seen this before. Five, five. Obviously, she's saying bar, bar, bar. Now let's watch a slightly different video. Five, 
far, 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 far. Here we can clearly hear him saying far, far, far. Except that she isn't. The video shows her saying far, but the audio track is still of her saying far, exactly as she did in the first video. So the visual input overrode the audio. To make it crystal clear what's going on, let's look at this one more time. Once again, we'll have a soundtrack that says bar, but this time we'll have a split screen with a face saying far on one side and a face saying far on the other. As this plays, move your eyes from one side to the other and observe how what you hear changes. Bar, 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 bar. And, uh, well, I got that out. That's why it's exciting what we get on YouTube. Uh, out of control. There's, uh, so, takeaways there, real quick. Um, yeah, those are all fun, who cares? Um, each one of those is representing a different part of your automatic processing uh, that every one of them was hand selected to uh, things that matter in VR. Um, the one <coughs> where uh, the orbiting tracks look like they're going forwards and backwards, your peripheral vision is super important to determining motion. Uh, they call it vection. If you've ever sat in a car and everybody else takes off, you feel like you're going backwards, it, that's what's going on. Because these displays wrap around, um, it, as it gets wider and wider field of view, you have more and more chance of convincing people they're in motion and then making them sick when they notice with their inner ear and their stomach that they're not in motion. There are solutions for all those things. Probably got to speed up a little bit here. Um, uh, the color and stuff, that's all kind of self-explanatory, but things you need to kind of think about uh, as you're... What did I type? Of, of demos that 
just come up with clever hacks to get the touch in there. It, it, a lot of people have heard of Elite Dangerous. It's kind of the darling of the, the DK community. It's a space simulation. They took popular joysticks, modeled them into the game. You just uh, take a look, position your joysticks right there, uh, and then play the game for five minutes, and you start to believe that these weird skinny hands are your hands. And when you push the button, they animate the thumb going up there to push the button. You push the throttle, it moves with you, uh, you buy it. Um, even though there is no tracking, there is no cool tech to make that happen. Uh, there's an even better hack uh, called Don't Let Go. Uh, this guy has you hold down your control keys on your keyboard. Just position your keyboard or your laptop like it is in the VR world. And the whole point of this demo is to threaten your hands. Uh, he starts out with silly stuff, but after you've been doing it for a couple minutes, you believe those are your hands. It basically matches. And then um, there's uh, there's knives coming, kind of circling around. You're kind of, uh, there's a spider that crawls up your arm. Um, and, and that's where a lot of people lose it based on how they feel about bugs. But if they haven't lost it and you're a mean person, just go ahead and touch their arm. As, uh, <laughs> there's nobody that can resist that unless they've prepared, mentally prepared for it because they've seen you be mean to somebody else. Nobody, because you're like, oh, it's not a spider, that's not a spider. But you feel it, you're like, oh shit, there might be a spider. <laughs> um, so you can't have disagreement. And if you have even a little bit of agreement, um, it becomes very, very strong. So you end up working with hand controllers of some kind, model them into the game. Um, make sure the gun, the lightsaber you're holding is the right shape. You won't get the weight right. The shape is, is a good start. Um, most people will play games sitting down. That is one of the problems where uh, motion in your game, extreme motion, doesn't match what they're feeling. They got a butt on a chair, they got feet on the floor, and they're, most importantly, their head is holding totally still. Um, so you really want to limit that. Uh, if you stick to rotations, um, go ahead. Just curious, do you know if there's a, uh, an effect? Like, so say they took that rubber hand and put it in cold water, yeah. and then poured hot water on your real hand. Uh -huh. Can you, you know, affect what you actually feel on your real limb by what you're seeing on the, the People, limb that you've identified? There, there is a little bit of research around. It's not quite what you said, but um, showing people a cold environment can actually modulate their body temperature a little bit. The skin and stuff will react to what they see. Um, but again, you wouldn't want a huge disagreement like I'm sweaty in here, but they're showing me you know, the North Pole in my headset. Um, in terms of mixing, uh, mixing inputs like that, I would expect that having a disagreement like that might pull you out of the experience. Okay. But there's ambiguous inputs that can match visual expectations. One of the best ones is uh, Disney Imagineering's made a touchpad that gives you little tiny shots, really fast. And as you move along it, um, it can simulate texture because you don't interpret them as little tiny shots, you interpret them as eh, something. And so it goes, duh, 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 duh. you might think that's a uh, ridge surface or you can modulate that to get sandpaper. And it's just a regular capacitive touchpad that gives you little shots. So if you're ambiguous, and it matches what you're seeing, it can enhance, enhance what you're doing. And um, I want to run out of time. So how, what is, what is everyone here about? How many people came for the crazy picture with Rick Moranis? Is that a big drop? Okay. <laughs> I have no shame. Oh, where'd that go? Well, I'm making a mess of things. I uh, wanted everybody to be aware that uh, there's a user group for this, uh, especially. So my goal outside of uh, family and work is uh, to grow the VR community in Minnesota. I've uh, previously organized IGDA Twin Cities for seven years. Kind of grew it from 10 people to about 80 people a month, uh, mailing list of 700. And now I'm trying to focus on VR. Um, and we meet every month. And we get about 20, 20, 30 people. Definitely want to see devs there. We'll cover anything you want, how to get started, intro, Unity, you name it. Um, but we're always showing up cool projects there. And I put a stack of cards in the back. I'll put another one up here at the end. If you want to get signed up on the mailing list. If anyone likes that hand demo, they did one with the Oculus Rift with the roller coaster. Yeah. They waited until they got to the top, and then they just gave them a little push in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's dangerous for your gear, though. If you mess with people, no, you, you don't do don't do it with your own gear. As a <laughs> if you care about your own gear, but there's one guy in there that they almost had to restrain. 
And I've focused a lot. It is fun to talk about the doom and gloom. There are things that were I'm super sensitive. Uh, I think I threw a slide in here about uh, that deck's gone. So my, my DK1 experience, um, I was already in that forum where Palmer Lucky got discovered by John Carmack, and I was ready to buy the pile of crap from China that he soldered together for $500, and then Carmack got involved and it blew up and everybody knows the story. Um, so I got one of the very first DK1s. I rushed home from work as soon as I saw it. Well, I was watching the tracking, of course, all week. Um, and I would waited a year at that point, and I got home, and uh, within five minutes, made myself extremely ill. Um, and had to go learn about what's okay and what's not okay, um, and work up uh, a little bit of uh, resistance, they call it VR legs. Uh, I'm still one of the most sensitive people I know, and that's kind of a blessing as a developer. Um, so for example, these videos I talked about with either spherical or stereoscopic, but not quite right, I can't even watch those for more than 10 minutes, I'm that sensitive. Um, but there's games that I can play for hours, Elite, I've made some stuff that is okay for me, so I know it's okay for everybody. Um, so I don't want to doom and gloom this thing, but it is, it takes testing, it takes iteration and experimentation. Things you think are fine, probably not. Things you think might not work, might work. It's really interesting, and that's part of the fun. Um, so yeah, so many videos like that, it's kind of like uh, awkward barge. You know, you're strapped in and you got your eyes bolted open. It's, you have to go where the camera goes, and if you're not okay with that. Yeah, and that's one of the things, just don't do it. I track, but if you get motion sick easily, then you'll get VR sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. generally you're sensitive, you know, to disagreements between your ears and your eyes. It's the inverse, but it is the same too. Sure. Sensory inputs. Positional tracking on the DK2 is a huge difference for you. Like just from how long it yeah. sick. Once you had the frame rate up and yeah. you had the latency figured out, I started on a laptop that was killed a month right there, trying to get that okay. Um, yeah, DK1, I never got okay. DK2, uh, no problem at all. And like at the Global Game Jam, I did it for pretty close to 48 hours straight with a little bit of sleep. And the only downside was uh, the only thing that's left that isn't quite right and won't be solved for a few years is you focus at a fixed distance. It's not this close. It's generally either infinity or like 45 feet. But the lenses in your eyes get kind of used to that, same as if you stared at your monitor for 12 hours straight. Uh, and the one thing that happened was um, after doing that and not sleeping for two days, uh, driving down the road and I look up the road sign and it's like, oh, that's blurry, and then it goes bleak. It took a second instead of being instantaneous or imperceptible to focus at different depths. But since then, uh, it hasn't been an issue. There's an accommodation that goes on, you kind of learn different modes. If anybody's got a Nintendo 3DS with a 3D screen, uh, there's a very well documented thing on the internet. Um, it takes about a week to be able to switch modes and do close up depth weirdness and then the rest of the world and close of depth. Um, and once you've gotten over that little hurdle, it never comes back. It's you're able to switch modes. And the same thing happens in VR. Uh, I'm trying to find my crazy picture. Let's bring that back for a second. I'll just expose you guys to my private here in email threads. The um, I don't remember why I pulled that up. The HTC Vive is the darling of the internet right now. How many people read, read it on a regular basis? Board game forums, yeah. Um, that's this, uh, <laughs> that's this uh, phenomenon. Every time, first time you try VR, no matter what happens, you're like, wow. And they're like, but I feel sick, but wow. <laughs> um, you get a freebie, a new experience like that. It's amazing. There's no screen boundaries. I, what? There's, I can look behind me? Oh my god. Um, same thing, the first time you try input in VR, total freebie. Um, so you gotta separate that, which was basically everybody that covered the Vive had never tried VR with hand input, from once that's commonplace and that, uh, I don't know, I don't have a good term for it, it's not obscene, the virginity has worn off. Um, you gotta separate that as hype from where it will be after it's been in your house for more than a day or a week. You know, the, the Wii bowling effect. Um, I'm gonna buy one. And now it's dusty. <laughs> um, this is the most exciting thing going, no question, because of the tracking. Uh, it's uh, been tracking a 15 by 50 foot area. It has these laser and spinning laser emitters. These are public slides too. I'll, I'll share them. I've already shared them in our IPD group. Um, that are just 
there are these dumb laser emitters sitting in the corner of your room, and uh, really cheap photodiodes on your faceplate, on your rigid elbow detector, um, and very simple math, uh, similar to GPS calculations, is just timing and, and orientation, known orientation on this object. Um, and now you can track anything uh, very cheaply, very quickly. And it's essentially what price premium, how much does HTC want to gouge the early adopters? It is the question that remains relevant for this year. Um, it's going to be widespread. Valve's already announced the license IP for completely free. Um, you don't have to develop only on Steam, but you do have to release on Steam, you can release elsewhere. Um, and uh, if you're not doing a commercial release, you can just use their software and tools for free. Um, it's super exciting. Whether or not uh, the Steam exact thing works, this is out there, this is proven. China will have this IP uh, pirated and knocked off by, I'll say January. Um, you'll be able to buy something really cheap and really crummy, and then maybe it'll be this one version that's good and costs a little more and, and nobody buys it. Um, <laughs> but this, this is coming. This is coming this fall, this winter. Um, the price is yet unknown. Uh, and the important part is the hand controllers. Where's that picture? This is the old picture. Oh, I'm sure it'll show up in this video. That would not happen. Anyway, there's some hand controllers. They look like uh, maracas with little funny dots on the end. And they're just picking up the lasers from the corners of your room. Um, this leads us to the question, well, yeah, Zach's going to have a 15 by 15 foot room dedicated to this, no question. Uh, most people won't, and it works fine when you're sitting still. Um, but designing for those two different experiences, now you're fragmenting your niche market even more. That's where some of the really interesting challenge, challenges come in to try to. Uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, it shows how long they've been working on this for years. A lot of, Michael Abrash and a lot of the talent at Octos came straight over from Valve when Facebook money hit. Um, they've been working on it for years. Chaperone is using the tracking, which is very accurate. It's using the cameras in the front so that um, you put in the dimensions of your room, the emitters are placed, you say wall, 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 and maybe tables. They haven't shown that yet in the demo, but I'm sure it'll be there doesn't keep you from squishing your pets or your kids, but um, as you get close to a known obstacle, the camera kicks in and shows you, hey, that's a wall. Or if you don't want to use the passenger camera, it just puts up like a grid to show you the stop. And what everybody does is like, really? And then they touch it, and then there's a wall there, and they're like, oh, cool, because <laughs> it, it matches what you see. Um, so if you want to get started with this, I apologize, I'm going to run down the clock. Um, you can do it today, you just uh, strap Hydra to the top of your Oculus with some big rubber bands. And it is literally just taking, Hydra is like Wiimotes, but it's magnetic. So they don't suffer from all the drift and attitude problems that Wiimotes do. Um, that blowy thing is a magnetic emitter, and these are the controllers. Um, and uh, you strap that up there, and now you can walk around within your camera's tracking area and have good face tracking and good hand tracking. And that's where all my development and things we're working on is going right now. Um, we'll be doing that probably next month, uh, unless I can get uh, somebody from the U of M to come in and talk about uh, Project Tango. But I'm, I'm always the backup at these music groups. So I think I've gone over on time. I'll, I'll take just a couple of really quick questions if there's anything people are curious about. Where are the first Hollow Suites open? I don't know. Hygiene is really a tough issue. The Disney guy had this awesome quote at GDC. Uh, people, he just paused, considered the politics, the money, and said, pink eye is very contagious. <laughs> At Disney, we take our glasses and we do a high pressure steam wash. Uh, you're not doing that with your VR headset, so there needs to be, again, obscenities. A VR condom, some kind of alcohol wipe down that the Oculus cannot take right now. Um, that needs to be solved. They need to go steampunk with copper. Yeah, some, something, yeah. Um, and then a little bit of durability concerns. They're, they're cheap enough now that it's almost any other quick questions? Development, anything at all? Um, what What is your definition of like the separation of VR and AR? VR just fully encloses you. Um, AR will be better, will be used more. It's If you solved AR, you solved VR a couple years prior. AR is harder because you get to see the real world. 
there is no tracking latency in the real world. Plus, you have the difficulty of determining the shape of that table versus the glare coming off of it versus the all this kind of thing. Um, people that have tried the hollow lens said it is absolutely rock solid tracking, but it's a small bit of your field of view. So I see something cool, Minecraft guy, but then around it, I don't see it. Or I see the surface of Mars, but I also see that you know, that's a table and there's like a little porthole into the surface of Mars. Um, so that's just a few years behind, sort of like the, the magic leap, uh, which will solve the islands thing. It's just a few, a few years behind what we have today. Um, but it will, this is all happening because of cell phone components. You just take them, slap them together, you tweak them. Um, they're already mass produced, they're already cheap. That's custom hardware, that will cost more, that will take more time. Uh, all right, we should probably wrap up. Uh, there's a stack of cards back there, stack of cards up here if you wanna. Ask questions or show up to our meetings every month for three different events. Yes.